I'm going to do a video on how to read and decode the various VIN plates that you're going to get on the engine and on your Mercedes SL. Um, I'm going to also show you the original data card for Mercedes for the car that we've just bought because that contains an awful lot of information that isn't shown on here. I'm going to show you how to read it um, so you are going to know exactly what your car should have in terms of what colour it should be, what seats it should have, all the various options. Then we're going to go down to the garage and you're going to see exactly why it's crucial to have that information before you ever buy a car. So let's have a go at decoding this data card, which was very kindly sent to me by a contact in the parts division in Mercedes at Bristol. OK, now the top left here isn't going to mean much to you. Um, it's all about the shift numbers, the product numbers, etc. And the order number where it starts getting interesting is here. This is basically your chassis number. 107 is the model number, which is a SL. 042 means that it is a manual car and 10 here means that it is left hand drive. If that was 20 it would be a right hand drive manual. So and this here is just the number off the belt is the 550th car basically. So that there's your chassis number. Just remember that 107 SL 42 means it is a manual and one zero means it's left-hand drive. The Aufstrag number is the order number. The 571 is the paint code. Okay, 571 is metallic red. And what it means is the top and the bottom of the car are both metallic red. Sometimes the sills could be painted in a different color. The Austartung is the interior trim code and 165 I think is a medium gray color. And here you see where it says 40 at the top there and a one underneath, that actually means 401. And 401 means black cloth seats. 416 means it had a hard top. And over here, 502 means it's got an outside rear view mirror on the right. 511 means it's got a Becca Mexico cassette player, or at least it did have when it left the factory. 524, paint code preservation, e.g. it's got clear coat. 531 meant it had an automatic antenna. 580, so this was air conditioner. And 598 was heated rear window, that's on the hard top. 640 is aluminium disc wheels or Mexican hat wheels. So sometimes known 669 is spare wheel 677 is a tropical battery sounds exotic and now 740 means it had a folding top or the soft top is black fabric wenig gewünscht the less desirable or le less wished for items down here is the engine number and i'll show you in the garage where we will find that uh, Getriebe number, actually, that's the gearbox um, number there, I believe. And obviously, this car is a 280 SL. Scheinwerfer Bosch means it's got Bosch headlamps. And this is the key number for the car. If you've ever lost, ever lose the keys or need a spare for your Mercedes, if you gave them that number, they'd be able to send you a new key for about £20. And um, this here is tells you what kind of tyres were on the car. In this particular case, it's Michelin's. Sometimes they had Dunlops on. And that is about the only useful information on here. April 75 is the date of the car. So it's a 1975 280 SL left-hand drive manual, or it should be. And along here is all the options that you could choose when you're getting this car. Now, this is going to be important to us when we put this car back together. Um, and we start sourcing the bits. Okay, this is a picture of the data plate of the red 280 SL that we finished, pretty much finished restoring. And this is a data plate that came with the car that I've just bought. It's not from the car I've just bought, it was just in the box of bits. The point of showing you them both alongside each other, you can see that the layout is different, okay? But those data plates will always have the 1070 20 or 10, and 1070420 means that that's a right-hand drive, the 20 is right-hand drive manual, 42 is manual. 
On this one here, 107.4210 means it's a left-hand drive manual. The 240 here means it's car number 240 off the um, conveyor belt, I do believe. Um, now, some of these numbers, I'm not 100% sure about what they actually mean. For example, the top number, is that just the product number? I'm not sure. On this car, it's got 73, long number 73. So if anybody knows that, do let me know. Um, but these three digit numbers, the 571, that's the paint code there. Okay, 568 and 568 is um, signal red, which is what that 280SL is painted in. And these here are the options, okay, which you can look up in the um, Excel spreadsheet list. So I'm down at the garage. I'm going to tell you a little story about how these SLs came to be. The silver car here is the first car I ever owned which was sitting in a pub car park where I was doing a gig once and I asked the owner if they ever wanted to sell it, let me know. And unfortunately that owner died of leukemia and the person's mother phoned me up and I ended up buying that car for 6,000 pounds, thinking it was a bargain and then promptly spent another 6,000 pounds getting all the holes and everything welded up and various other bits and pieces. The red SL over there was one of two that was sitting in a field a place called Auto Classico in Bristol for many years. Um, and then one I've just sold, I had to sell that because the land there has just been sold and I want to develop it and I needed to get it off the property, which is why I sold it. And I, in a way, I wish I hadn't, but that was the better of the two cars, which took about three years to restore. The plan was always to take the 450SL and bring that back to life. But an opportunity came up that I couldn't turned down which is to do with this car here now this car was listed on ebay as a restoration project and it was listed at a reasonable price this car here has has been painted all but the bonnet and the rear valance over there have been painted and then a huge amount of photographs came with this car showing the um, restoration to the bodywork, which was extensive, new floor pans, various bits and pieces, all of which I've had to have done on that red car and will at some stage have to do on this silver car. I'm just in the process of doing some of that now. So they will have spent anywhere between seven, ten thousand pounds on the bodywork and paint of this car. So there was something about the car when I was looking at it on eBay that didn't quite makes sense and I couldn't figure it out until I came to the garage and had a look at the engine of my 1976 280SL. This is a left-hand drive 1976 280SL manual. The astute amongst you may already notice that there's not something not quite right with this car but let's have a look under the bonnet and see if you can spot anything that's amiss. Okay, so this is a, I think it's M110 engine, straight six block. The thing that was odd to me was this here and the fact that the um, accelerator mechanism went across the top of the block like that. Let's just have a quick look at this silver SL over here and you'll see what I mean. All a bit tight in this garage at the moment. So we've got the same six cylinder block here. But if you have a look over here, the whole air intake looks completely different. And the um, accelerator pedal mechanism doesn't go across the block. This is the other 280SL I have. And once again, those two engines are very similar. This is a 1985 280SL, um, same engine block exactly the same air intake arrangement over here slightly different on the um that pipe going across there but the accelerator mechanism is exactly the same on both the 85 and the 76 the greatest of experts on these old mercedes by any stretch of imagination so i asked a friend of mine to get me the data card for mercedes on this car and as you saw from the beginning of the video this should be a left hand drive 280 SL manual. It's definitely got a 280 block in there. If we come and have a look, you will see 
that that, my friends, is anything but a manual gearbox. That's an automatic gearbox. And this is not the engine that you'd expect to find in a 280 SL. This, I believe, is um, a fuel injection. Because this is a fuel injected engine. And obviously, it's got the automatic gear fluid in here. So, what I noticed about this car that was that it had the wrong engine in it. I think this is the air con unit here as well, which wouldn't have come with this car, I don't believe. Um, so somebody has put a different engine in here and turned this car from a manual to an automatic. The other big giveaway is this fan setup here is different on the um, 280SLs. To cut a long story short, I contacted the seller or the owner of this car and told him what I'd found out about the car and pointed out that the price that he was selling it at was probably a little bit ambitious um, to somebody who knew anything about SLs and he agreed and, and in the end agreed to sell me this car for a very reasonable price and um, based on what I know it would cost to actually do that amount of body and panel work to one of these SLs. Um, so I didn't pay an awful lot of money for this car yet but I, I'm going to pay an awful lot of money in the future bringing it back to life. So if you're interested in old Mercedes or maybe even old cars, um, what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to do a walk around and I'm going to just point out all the things that I've noticed are missing from this car that we'll need to replace and give you an idea of what it's going to cost to replace all of those parts. Because um, what I'm keen to do is a lot of people out there have always dreamed of owning an SL or there's also a lot of people out there that own an SL and are restoring it. And what I'm keen to do with this channel is, you know, show that if I can do some of the restoration work then anybody else can, try and point out the cheapest place to get quality parts, but also try and avoid some of the pitfalls, really expensive pitfalls and errors that can be made. For example, I imagine that the person who owned this car prior to me had no idea how much it would cost to put this right um, and I'm going to run through all of that just so that people don't rush out and buy a SL that's been sitting in the field for many years and think oh I'm going to be able to spend a few thousand dollars or pounds and get this back on the road because really it's not as simple as that. Um, to give you an, an indication this SL here which is now looking quite nice um, it took three years to get into that shape. It took a year to do all the welding and the bodywork. Admittedly, I got it done with a um, sort of friend of a friend and didn't pay an awful lot of money for that. But it took an awful long time and in the end, I think I almost had the threat to take him to court to get the job done. That was the bodywork. The, the guy who painted the car also took about a year to paint it because he ended up stripping many of these panels back down to bare metal and he did an amazing job um, so I think just to give you an idea of costs I think I paid about two thousand pounds to get the bodywork done on this car which you would normally pay two or three times that in labor but as I say I got a very good deal I paid three thousand pounds to get this car painted and once again you would normally pay I would say at least twice that for the kind of quality paint job that they did on this car and then I probably spent at least £10,000 putting this car back together. And the expensive bits would be the interior trim. You're not going to get much change from about £1,000 to £2,000. And bearing in mind, I trimmed that myself quite badly, but you know, it did save several thousand pounds. That's going to cost you two to three thousand pounds just to do the interior of your car. That's assuming that you've actually got all the bits. Um, the woodwork alone, if you needed a set of that, is five, six hundred pounds. These wheels on this car, I didn't put these wheels on this car, but I did pay to have them refurbished. Um, that would be about two thousand to three thousand pounds for the wheels. The bumpers would be about a thousand pounds. The rear lights would be, I don't know, five hundred pounds. Same with the front lights. If you wanted a set of these trims here, you wouldn't get a much change from a thousand pounds for that. The 
engine on this car was absolutely fine. In fact, it's a beautiful car to drive, a five-speed manual. Um, somebody must have spent quite a bit of money rebuilding the engine on this car before I had it. But just things like all the radiator pipes and all the rest of it. I've done individual um, videos on that, but it's not cheap to do all of that stuff. And once again, the soft top roof on this car was um, in really good condition as well. So we saved ourselves thousands of pounds on the one hand, but it still cost thousands of pounds to put this car back on the road in the four minutes in. And it's by no means perfect. So what I'm going to be doing with the other red car is over the next few weeks and months, I'm going to be putting that car back together. I have got a donor car, which is the gold 450 SL. And somehow I need to find a place to store that in Bristol because I'm going to be needing, I would say, about a third to two thirds of the parts off that car to um, bring this car back to life. 